The Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, joins me now from Canberra. Uh, Treasurer, before we get into the big picture on the mid-year economic forecast, why is an area like Western Sydney suffering from such comparatively high unemployment? And it's always been higher out there, especially for young people. Mm. Well, there could be a variety of factors. It could be access to infrastructure. It could be um, the uh, the various economic conditions in the in the particularly local area. But what we saw Lee today was that 366,000 jobs were created over the course of the last month, the highest on record. And around half of those jobs were in New South Wales, which has roared back after the extended lockdown. So today's news about jobs is very positive indeed. There are 180,000 more people in work today than at the start of the pandemic. And what was also particularly pleasing about today's job numbers for the country is that around 60% of those jobs that were created in the month of November went to women and about a third went to young people. So we've actually had the strongest labour market recovery in the world. When the coalition was elected nearly nine years ago, you promised to end, quote, Labor's debt, <coughs> excuse me, Labor's debt and deficit nightmare. In all that time, you've only taken the nation further into debt. To use the PM's words today, is this what you mean by shaking and baking the economy? Well, you will remember that we delivered the first balanced budget in 11 years, which actually put the government and the economy in a position to respond as required uh, to the pandemic. And it was because of that economic strength that we were able to put in place programs like JobKeep, which yeah, saved 700,000 jobs. On the last day of this program for the year, address the question, which is about debt and taking the nation further back into debt without a clear plan to get out of it? Where is your budget repair plan? Well, Lee, let me answer that question. Um, we've been hit with the biggest economic shock since the Great Depression, the first pandemic in a century. It has required um, the spending that has been unprecedented, over 16% of GDP, over $300 billion, and the federal government has done the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to economic support. There was no alternative. Or we could have done nothing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not and arguing. I'm not arguing yes, but, about no, that. But that, but is, that is why. But that is why, Lee, there is extra spending. Now, you asked me about the budget repair job. And can I say to you that we've actually seen an $80 billion improvement in the budget bottom line from what I announced last but October there's no long -term to what was plan. the final... There's no long-term plan that's visible to claw back this huge debt that the nation is in and the structural deficit that we've got there. Well, I completely reject that um, that uh, characterisation of what we've seen today. There was an $80 billion improvement in the final budget outcome for 2021. What we saw today was that net debt peaks at 37.4% whereas it was previously at budget peaking at 40.9%. We see the deficits halving over the forward estimates. We see unemployment getting into the fours and sustainably so for only the second time in 50 years. What is going to drive a stronger budget bottom line is going to be a stronger economy where more people are in work. But do that you is really our clear fiscal that you claw, Do you really reckon that you can claw back all of that debt simply by what tax receipts, income tax receipts from more people in work? That's going to do all the job, is it? Well, I can tell you that by getting more people in work, less people on welfare, you improve significantly the budget bottom line. But let's also not forget we're, we're still in this pandemic, as the Omicron variant has reminded us, Lee. So we have had to spend an unprecedented amount of money, but that has been what has been required. Our political opponents wanted us to keep going with JobKeeper, keep going with the COVID disaster payment. We took the difficult decisions to end those payments and it was the right decision because since then we've seen the labour market rebound strongly. So we're working to a clear fiscal strategy, going for growth, growing the economy, driving unemployment down and getting net debt as a share of the economy coming down as well. But say going for growth, you mentioned the Omicron variant. Everything in my EFA could turn to dust, couldn't it, if people get spooked? Well, the uh, forecasts from Treasury in the uh, budget update today are based on the best medical advice from us. Uh, to us. And the Chief Medical Officer has said that while Omicron is highly transmissible, um, early signs are that it's a milder variant than other variants. Uh, the other point is uh, from the Chief Medical Officer that our vaccines 
are a effective defence against serious illness from these variants, as well as our other treatments. So that has given us cause uh, for encouragement, but we don't, there's no complacency. We do um, understand that Omicron is the latest variant and probably not the last one. But we did also account in this budget, Lee, for two different scenarios. One scenario was a downside scenario where there would be a variant of concern. That could affect the economy by $20 billion in reduced GDP and see unemployment otherwise 1% higher. And another um, scenario which had actually an upside that if the savings ratio went down faster and more, pe more people spent more money across the economy, then that could have a $30 billion improvement to the economy over the next two years. So you've we did take into account various scenarios. You've set aside $16 billion for spending measures that you've not yet announced. Is that all going to be pork barrel and going to marginal seats in the election campaign? Well, with the greatest respect, that's not the right accurate characterisation of that $16 well, what, what billion. What is dollars. that $16 billion then? Let me, let me explain to you. It's decisions taken but not yet announced, but also measures that have been announced where the actual financials are not made public because they're commercial in confidence. A significant amount of that relates to vaccines and particularly boosters that we've entered into contracts for and treatments. It's for aviation support where we've worked with the airlines to continue to keep regional and domestic routes in place so that there's a level of connectivity across the country as well as new quarantine facilities. And is that the whole uh, that 16 we're engaged million? To build. Well, that's a, a significant proportion of it. There are also some decisions um, that have been taken but not yet announced, and that's consistent with what has occurred under both sides of politics for budgets and, and budget that, updates. And will that money be going to marginal seats that the Coalition's hoping to retain or win in the federal election? That money is for important projects that, once we're in a position to announce, we will. Josh Frankberg, thanks very much for your time. You've always been very available uh, to the program this year, and we wish you the best for 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.